The big story on Action News tonight is the horrifying discovery made by police in Bucks County. Seven children living in deplorable conditions, unclean, unfed, uneducated. Officers have now arrested Shane and Crystal Robertson, charging the parents with seven felony counts each of endangering the welfare of children. The case we are about to present to you is not for the faint-hearted. A tragic case of neglect and cruelty of children by the two people in the world they should have been able to rely on, their parents. Shane and Crystal Robertson kept their children living like animals, trapped in a never-ending cycle of dirt, grime, and abuse. Some people simply do not deserve children. We would like to send our best wishes to the family and friends of the Robertson children, and of course the children themselves, who we hope are now on their way to recovery in their new lives. On April the 23rd, 2023, Penridge Regional Police Department in Pennsylvania receives a 911 call from a concerned citizen who had seen two minors entering a mobile home and taking things out at the Green Top Mobile Home Park. Naturally, the person was concerned that the home was being burgled and asked the police to check it out. Officers from the department arrived at around 1.30 in the afternoon. As they approached the home, which looked unkempt to say the least, maybe even abandoned, they could not have anticipated what would happen next. There was no burglar trying to make a run for it. The only person they would see would be a young girl, age 12, outside the home next door. Eyebrows were immediately raised. The little girl clearly had not washed in well, quite some time. She was dirty, disheveled, and barefooted, but something else just wasn't right. Officers approached the girl and asked if she had been in the property next door. The girl simply said that her parents had told her not to go in there and that she was responsible, not them. She went on to tell the officers that she only went over to the home because she wanted a blanket to keep her pet rats warm and that her parents didn't have a lot of money so they couldn't get her one. No sooner had she finished talking when another girl, slightly older, who turned out to be 14 years old, appeared from around the backside of the property. She was wearing very dirty clothing and work boots that were far too big for her. As it turned out, the girls were sisters. They had been left home alone. While their parents weren't there, they decided to go to the trailer next door to see what they could find. Given the condition of the children, officers were keen to hang around a bit and see what was going on. No child should be in the state that these two children were in. The officers were concerned, to say the least. One thing the officers noticed, the girls kept reiterating over and over that their parents didn't have much money. One of the girls managed to get their dad's phone number and give it to the police. After a brief phone call, the parents arrived back at the trailer approximately 25 minutes later. The parents' names were Shane Robertson, age 48, and Crystal Robertson, age 38. Officers immediately raised concerns with Shane and Crystal about their two daughters' welfare. Officers wanted to see inside their home to see what condition the girls were living under. Surprisingly, Shane and Crystal agreed, but the officers were not prepared for what they were about to see. Before entering, Crystal warned the officers that the fridge was padlocked. She said this was because the children went through so much food that she had to stop them from eating, calling them human garbage disposals on legs. It is important to remember her comment for what you are about to hear. The property was filthy. It hadn't been cleaned in a long time, if ever. Different parts of the home were in desperate need of repair, and some parts were almost completely open to the outside world. It goes without saying that the officers could not simply walk away from this situation. The authorities have a duty to care when it comes to children and their well-being. And this situation was far from a good, stable home. The officers asked Shane if there were any more children in the home. Shane said yes, he had one more daughter who was 16 years old. Emerging from a bedroom after being coaxed out, she was in similar condition to the other girls. She appeared messy, unwashed, and wearing dirty clothes. She explained that she knew the police were outside, but was busy watching the youngest child at the time. The officers had seen enough. This was not something they could deal with on their own. They left the property without causing too much of a fuss, but immediately filed a childline report. 
Given the emphasis the officers put on the case and the urgency that it needed to be treated with, someone from the Bucks County Children and Youth arrived the very next day. It wasn't long before the police were called once again. Not only had the children's officer been horrified by the conditions they were living in, but they also discovered yet more children that Shane and Crystal had conveniently failed to mention. Upon entering another bedroom, they found not one, not two, but four other children hidden away from prying eyes. When on the phone to the police, the word used to describe the children was emaciated. The Oxford Dictionary defines emaciated as abnormally thin or weak, especially because of illness or a lack of food. One of the children was even found on the floor in the fetal position, suffering from what appeared to be symptoms of the flu, shivering and sweating at the same time, clearly unwell and clearly having had no medical attention whatsoever. The police officers in attendance questioned Shane and asked why he had failed to mention that he had more than double the number of children that he had allowed them to see just one day earlier. Shane said that he didn't want to get into any trouble. It was a strange statement, but the officers themselves were not completely blameless. When the 16-year-old had come out of the bedroom, she stated openly that she was watching the youngest child, so clearly there were more children at the property. Secondly, Shane knew the police had reported him to Childline, so it was only a matter of time before the authorities came sniffing around again and discovered the truth. In addition to the three other girls, they also found an 8-year-old girl, a 10-year-old girl, a 6-year-old boy, and a 4-year-old girl. This time, police were not going to wait around for any more excuses from Shane or Crystal. These children needed help, and they needed it immediately. All of them were transferred to the Grandview Hospital in the small town of Sellersville, about four miles away from their home. With the children now in the hands of professionals who could assess their condition and decide the best steps to take next, the authorities began their investigation into what had been going on at the family home. And they hadn't even scratched the surface yet. Investigators from both police and children and youth services now started to inspect the home in detail, documenting everything they found. The entire property was, of course, filthy, barely fit for human habitation, let alone five young children and two teenagers. The kitchen and living area were covered in rodent droppings, dust, and dirt. Strangely, the lower half of the bathroom door had been completely cut away. Anyone who was using the bathroom or the toilet would be exposed. The only foodstuff in the home was for animals. The only other products that were in the locked fridge, by the way, were alcohol. Investigators continued to walk around on the bare plywood floor, kept falling through to the ground below because the wooden joists were damp and started to rot. The bedrooms were no better. None of the bed sheets or covers had been cleaned in months, if ever. Crystal and Shane's bedroom was particularly strange. The bed had been moved into the middle of the room, and surrounding it were numerous animal cages. There were holes in every wall, and a big hole looking into the children's bedroom next door, which had been covered up by a broken washing machine. The children's bedroom had no door at all, and again, there were holes in the walls and garbage all over the floor. The third bedroom, again for some of the children, had garbage on the floor, but worse than that, a mixture of what appeared to be human and animal waste was also found on the floor. It was in the third bedroom that investigators learned what the little girl had meant when she said she wanted something to keep her pet rats warm. In total, there were over two dozen rats in cages in the bedroom. Astonishingly, these rats were not the only pets in the home. Officers found two rabbits, two dogs, two turtles, snakes, and toads. And of course, let's not forget about the four-foot-long tengu, which roamed around the home covered in filth and creating more as it went along. Investigators also got a glimpse into the hygiene of the family on whole. As you would expect, it wasn't great, to say the least. There was not a single toothbrush or tube of toothpaste in the home, nor was there any deodorant, soap, or shampoo. Even if this was a family who had little or no money, 
there wasn't any excuse for the state of the home. In America, there are organizations that are designed to help. SNAP, which is Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, and TFAP, the Emergency Food Assistance Program. Between them, they'll help fund and supply a network of approximately 200 food banks and over 60,000 food pantries across the country. Through donations, these food banks can also provide basic toiletries and hygiene products. At first, it looked like a family in serious trouble that had possibly been too proud to ask for help. But now it was starting to look like willful neglect, pure and simple. Despite all the findings by investigators, Crystal had an explanation. Well, at least for the floor. She said that because the floor had fallen through, they had removed most of the wood from certain doors and placed it on the floor of the home, and that the new boards only fell through because they hadn't gotten around to fixing the wood in that place yet. It was strange how Crystal came up with an explanation for the floorboards because she didn't try to explain anything else. Back at the hospital, the children were being examined by doctors. It was quickly and unsurprisingly determined that every one of the children, with the exception of the 14-year-old, was severely undernourished. Two of the children tested positive for COVID, two had kidneys that were not functioning correctly, and three of them had fevers which led to them being diagnosed with acute viral syndrome. It is easily treated, but if left untreated, it can also kill its host. The next step were clear. Pending further investigation, all of the children were taken away from their parents and placed in foster homes. Three of the children now had to be referred to specialists because of the severity of their malnutrition. When someone is so undernourished, it simply isn't a case of letting them fill their faces and fattening them up. The bodies of children especially falls behind on its natural journey of growth so badly that specialist care is needed to gradually help the children's bodies recover. A dental assessment of the six-year-old boy also identified that the child had six teeth that needed immediate attention, as well as an untreated abscess in his mouth that had been given no attention and it was just left to get worse. Another of the children had to have five teeth taken out straight away and had six crowns put in. All of them showed severe signs of oral neglect. It was doubted whether some of the children had ever used a toothbrush in their entire lives. One set of foster parents for the 12-year-old girl had to report an addition to all of the other conditions they had mentioned. Her hair was so greasy and dirty, and she had live maggots crawling around on her head and scalp. She had been unable to brush her hair because of severe sunburn she had suffered a while back and was still in a lot of pain. To reinforce the condition her scalp was in, her hair was so matted and infested with bugs that the only solution was to shave off all her hair. All of the foster parents quickly discovered that the children had not been taught even the most basic education. Most of them couldn't spell their own names. This would certainly be a cause of concern for another condition they all suffered from, social anxiety. All of the children said they didn't like going out or being around other people. It's hardly surprising when you consider they hadn't been to any school or been faced with any kind of social interaction with anyone other than their siblings. It is truly frightening to think that someone, anyone, could allow their children to live and be neglected in that way. The treatment would have certainly continued for much longer had it not been for the concern of a neighbor, Tammy DeHaven, a mother of four herself, calling the police. I figured the trailer park couldn't do anything about it, so I figured I'd call the police and see if they could come in and do something. All lacked basic knowledge. Some of the children did not know their own birth dates. It's horrible. On May the 19th, almost a month after the police had received the initial 911 call from Tammy, Shane and Crystal Robertson were arrested and taken to the Bucks County Jail and charged with six counts each of third degree endangering the welfare of a child and one count of second degree endangering the welfare of a child. The second degree charge related to the youngest daughter because she was under the age of six. By now, any normal person would be thinking that surely, having suffered so much already in their short and no doubt miserable lives, nothing else could happen to the children. 
If only that was true. After the authorities had made sure they were physically okay and on the road to recovery, they had to interview them and ask what life was like and detail all of the experience to see if they had any lasting psychological damage. So far, no mental health issues that can be cured have been detected, but in one interview, a couple of the children let slip something more sinister. It was revealed that Shane and Crystal not only neglected their children, but beat them, using not just their fists, but also whips, belts, and various cords, usually, according to one of the children, a vacuum cleaner cord. Lord only knows why they owned a vacuum cleaner in the first place. But these beatings were carried out with alarming regularity, inflicting huge amounts of pain and lasting damage. This has since led to Shane and Crystal facing extra charges of assault. With regards to Shane's belt, this was significant. It was the first thing that many of the children mentioned, and they also stated that he wore it every day. Therefore, it was nearly always in sight. If those poor children ever saw the belt being removed, they probably knew what was coming next. If Shane wasn't wearing it, the children said it was left in the middle of the floor, still in full view, no doubt with the poor children keeping an eye on it, scared for their own safety. The eldest daughter, who was 16, also said that in February of 2023, Shane had punched her in the face with such ferocity that her nose was bleeding. She made a run for it, and Shane chased her down the road. After he caught up with her, he grabbed her and physically dragged her all the way back to the home by her hair. Another disturbing testimony came from the 14-year-old. She told investigators of how Crystal had once beaten her so badly with the black belt that she had welts on her body. Welts are bloodshot stripes of skin caused by repeated blunt force injuries. Around the same time, Shane told her that he was going to suffocate her. Shortly after, a fight broke out between Crystal and Shane, which resulted in Crystal storming out, saying, Do what you want to do. Kill them if you want. She then left Shane alone with the children. He then held a dirty brown blanket over the 14-year-old's face. She described how she struggled to breathe as the blanket covered her mouth and nose, smothering her airways. Thankfully, Shane did stop, but only just in time. It wasn't too long after that Shane handed her a sharp knife and told her to go in the bathroom and hurt herself. The real question here is why? Why would anyone have multiple children simply to abuse and neglect them? Had something happened to Shane and Crystal to make them this way? Normally, in cases like this, we see parents who are drug addicts or alcoholics, or maybe they have literally no money and are struggling just to make it. But here, after the police searched the property, there was no sign of drug use at all. There were only limited amounts of alcohol in the home, locked away in the fridge. What is worse is that they managed to make bail. Now, it was a relatively small amount. Between the two of them, their bond had been set at $10,000, and they were still able to come up with 10% of that to get out of jail. In other words, $2,000 between them. But it showed that they did have some money, and they evidently had money to buy alcohol. Meanwhile, their children were sharing rooms with sheets covered in animal waste, holes in the wall, untreated illnesses, and teeth so rotten they were ready to fall out, not to mention how undernourished they were. Having made bond, the couple seemed to carry on with their lives as normal while avoiding the media at all costs. The only time they were seen was when they were compelled to attend court. The couple may have done their best to avoid the media, but they could not avoid the public condemnation which came next. Members of the public and the media alike were asking the same questions. How could anyone do this to young children? Why even have children in the first place? The anger from the local community was at a boiling point, possibly mixed with a little bit of guilt as well. Since these people all lived relatively closely together, there were surely signs of what was happening, signs that the children were not being treated well. The opportunity for someone to alert the authorities probably was there sooner. We must remember, though, this was not the neighbor's fault. All of the blame must lay squarely at the feet of Crystal and Shane Robertson.
When interviewed, the 12-year-old girl told of how she and her 14-year-old sister were playing outside with a family dog. Suddenly, the dog ran off and went to the middle of the road where it was hit by a car, dying instantly. The little girls, devastated by the loss of their pet, got zero sympathy from Shane or Crystal. Quite the opposite, in fact. Shane and Crystal blamed the children for the dog's death and beat them, in her words, black and blue. After the beatings had finished, Crystal and Shane threatened to kill the children's pet rats in front of them. One of the most heartbreaking stories to come from many of the children was regarding the food situation in the home. Remember how Crystal called them human trash disposals? Well, nothing could have been further from the truth. The children revealed how small amounts of food in the home were either kept locked away in the fridge or in Crystal's bag. At times, the children were so hungry that they were forced to try to break into the fridge or try to take some food from Crystal's bag. Unfortunately, Shane or Crystal usually noticed, and it resulted in more beatings. Where was Crystal's maternal instincts? In cases like this, it's more common that this type of crime is carried out by a male, maybe a new boyfriend, for example. But here, it seems that the so-called mother was absolutely complicit in the crimes. The children said that far from trying to stop Shane or defend her children, Crystal used to go out and tell Shane to let loose on them. Finally, after all of the children had spoken at length, the Robertsons were arrested once again. This time, the authorities made sure they would not make bail. As well as the seven counts of assault they both faced, they were now also charged with conspiracy to commit a pattern of abuse that spared none of the children, and Shane was also charged with strangulation. The big story on Action News tonight is the horrifying discovery made by police in Bucks County. Seven children living in deplorable conditions, unclean, unfed, uneducated. Officers have now arrested Shane and Crystal Robertson, charging the parents with seven felony counts each of endangering the welfare of children. Police came upon the kids who were four to 16 years old almost exactly a month ago. Some of them allegedly hidden, others in an abandoned trailer. And tonight we're learning the extent of the conditions those kids were subjected to. The pair of them were rearrested on the 28th of September, 2023. Shane had a half a million dollar bail placed against him, and Crystal had a $250,000 bail. Naturally, neither of them could post bail and remained in prison. This time, there was no chance of authorities letting them get off lightly. Prosecutors are even readying further charges against them for the neglect of all of the animals that lived in the home. The couple appeared back in court on October the 2nd, 2023, and now they await trial. Unfortunately, and somewhat bewilderingly, some of the charges have now been dismissed by the judge. This is because during a recorded interview, two of the youngest children were unable to recall for certain where some of the abuse had taken place. Specifically, the strangulation and two of the assault charges had to be dropped. It is truly astounding that Shane and Crystal now face less charges because young children were unable to pinpoint every last smack or beating they received. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, to suggest that these children were making anything up. On the contrary, it is more likely that they suffered so much abuse and with such regularity that it was impossible for them to remember each specific incident. Thankfully, they have no chance of getting all of the charges dismissed during that hearing. Officers and caseworkers spoke of their distress at seeing the children so malnourished and mistreated. As they left court, a journalist asked Crystal her thoughts on the charges. She simply replied, They've been dismissed. Shane had tried to hide his face and refused to speak to anyone. Shane and Crystal are due in court for their next arraignment on November the 12th. Sadly for the children, they had to be separated, but this isn't all bad news. They have now been moved out of their foster homes and taken in by other family members, so at least they can still see each other. With the help of the family and the authorities, the children are on the road to recovery. 
Two of the youngest boys were gaining weight at the rate of about two pounds per week through finally eating regular meals. Their mental scars are still there, but it is hoped that they are young enough to recover from them. They are now all in education and said to be thriving. Looking at the bigger picture, the neighbor who reported the possible abuse of the children may very well have saved the lives of those children in every way possible. First of all, given the abuse they received, it was only a matter of time before one of their little bodies just gave up and left the world for good. Secondly, the children had not received a single day of formal education. Most of them couldn't speak properly, they couldn't read or write. How were they ever going to function in society as they got older? Through no fault of their own, they were on a one-way street to having no money, no job, and no prospects, just like their parents. To end on a note of positivity, the resilience of children can never be underestimated. These poor children may have suffered an appalling start to their lives at the hands of the two people that were supposed to take care of them. But now, as we know, they are making fresh starts to their lives and are being well taken care of. Having had such a tough start to life, this will hopefully only add to their mental strength as they get older and make their way through the difficult journey that is life. As for Shane and Crystal, if they are found guilty, which we hope seems likely, we can only hope they receive long sentences behind bars, and maybe by the time they get out, they will see how their children have done for themselves, free from their clutches, and living far more productive lives than their so-called parents ever did. If you found this story compelling, don't forget to like the video, comment down below your take on it, and please subscribe to the channel. Also hit the notification bell in order to stay up to date each time we reveal a new shocking case. Until next time, stay safe and keep your eyes peeled. You never know what's lurking in the shadows.